Hey, what's up guys? Ryan Ford here bringing you another Q&A. This is episode three where we're gonna go over your questions on how to start a parkour gym. Now, why should you listen to us? Well, first off, I started Apex Movement about seven years ago. We taught out of other gyms for a while until we opened up our own. But I'm also here with Amos Rendow international parkour superstar and I started Apex Movement Boulder. What we're going to go over are just a bunch of tips and uh, basic experiences and advice that we can give you to start a parkour gym. First off, I would say just know your shit. Be good at parkour, um, be knowledgeable and be credible. Don't try to start this when you're a complete newbie, obviously. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> Don't jump into it unless this is something you're passionate about, you're willing to be dedicated, and you're willing to roll with the blows when it gets hard because I think that's the defining uh, difference between people who are successful and not is there are going to be hard times, there are going to be some intense struggles, and unless you really believe in what you're doing and you're truly passionate, it's going to be hard to get through those times. Be ready to dedicate everything you have. I mean, don't expect to make a ton of money right off the bat, but do this because you love it and in the long term, you know it's going to be successful and pay off. That actually brings me to uh, an important question that a lot of you had are the basic financials. And while that's gonna vary um, depending on your location, your market, your um, audience, all that kind of stuff, I've seen successful parkour gyms around the country start on anywhere from 20 grand to 100 plus grand. We personally started out with a much smaller budget. We started small and we slowly bought new things and added um, equipment and stuff to our gym. It's so important to be creative with your resources where you can find stuff for free or stuff that otherwise would go to waste. Uh, I think uh, there's some different groups out there in the US that have done a great job of this. That was our whole mantra when we started Boulder and uh, we found a ton of stuff on Craigslist, Free Cycle. Uh, we searched out our resources. We had people work trading for us, doing a lot of really cool stuff just to be a member at the gym. So if you're creative, you don't have to drop a ton of money right off the bat. If there's one thing that made or break a community, and I've done a lot of traveling, I've trained with a lot of different communities, and I've got to see the dynamics of this, I would say the leadership was the make or break. From everything from retaining your students to building a strong community of people who are all very dedicated, as dedicated as you are, uh, it's the leadership that is the backbone of it all. So if you have a bad leader in there, people aren't going to be able to stand uh, behind them and work hard for them and really believe in the overall project. So you need a strong leader who is in it to not just tell everyone else what they want, but really organize everyone's passions together so that uh, you can have a happy, healthy community. You also have to get the community involved. You cannot do this by yourself. It takes um, an entire team of instructors and passionate people to help volunteer and get this place up and running. So you need to be able to connect with that local parkour community, utilize your friends, your family, um, anyone you can, try to get them behind your passion and your ideas so that it can be successful with all their support. It's almost like you have written this all down ahead of time. <laughs> I did. And then said everything I wanted to. <laughs> what I would have to say about that, because I also agree, but I'm going to say it in different words, better words. Um, what was the question? Um, what, what was the question again? Community support. Oh yes, 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 yes. I have something to say about that and I can say it better with more efficient words. And that is... <laughs> Right. This better be good. Better edit that out, yeah, and this better be good. I also have something to add to that, and that is something that I've seen cause communities to stagnate is certain people that are in leadership positions not having uh, a good skill of delegating and organizing others. I think one of the first things right off the bat if you want to have a successful uh, gym, business, community is find someone or a small group of people you can trust so that you can spread out the workload. Uh, you're just gonna stress yourself out if you're trying to do everything yourself. You're not gonna be able to do that much and then you'll never actually train anyone else to be able to take um, your spot when it comes to certain jobs. Don't micromanage. It might work for a little bit, but not in the long term. And lastly, you're going to need a crew of knowledgeable and skilled instructors. Get out of here. <laughs> I just did dance in your background, so suck on that. <laughs> Can you micromanage him out of here? Can you uh, go work on something? Actually, go work on that box and like sand it. That's how we treat our uh, championship athletes around Apex They're Movement. Like 
prize horses. <laughs> if you don't treat them like that, they're not gonna win. Don't be afraid to do something out of the norm. I know everyone's telling you like be an accountant, be a lawyer, go to college, do this or that. Like I went to college, but I also kind of had the opposite experience, like traveling the world, doing parkour, and I started my own business before I even graduated. And I would just say, if you're passionate about something and you work hard at it, even though it might not be an actual proven thing at the time, you can still be successful. I personally wanted to never work a day in my life. So if you do something that you're passionate, it's not work, it's play, it's fun. So I wanted to, this is just taking like way too long. Um, <laughs> And believe me, he's never worked a day in his life. He doesn't do anything around here. You're probably talented, you can do 720 gain or full twist, Rudy. But that's not going to give you a strong business and community. Um, instead, you need a group of skilled and talented instructors who can communicate well and uh, can accomplish a lot of what your program entails. And we've trained instructors over the years. I think since 2009, we had our own instructor certification established that was like 100 plus hours of assisting demoing, taking our classes, being evaluated, and all kinds of stuff like that. In 2011, we released that certification publicly, so it's been refined over the period of like three or four years. And if you want to know more about that, um, we've got it up on our website, and we or do you can them. go to this link right here. Right there. Just click right here. A few days ago, I asked you guys to post up some questions you might have about starting a parkour gym, so we're going to go ahead and look through a few of these on my phone here and answer them for you. What kinds of insurance do you need? There were a lot of questions that kind of revolved around this subject. I think insurance is a really complicated subject at this point in time, and that's why that's one of the benefits of us licensing um, another Apex movement and that's one of the tools we give people um, and eventually this will be a little bit easier in the future right now unfortunately there's not too much that we can say about it. We regularly get people saying oh my god your insurance must be like through the roof it must be like worse in gymnastics but actually our insurance is completely reasonable in four years of operation we have never once had a claim I've heard gymnastics people pay way more than what we do so it it can be reasonable if you uh, know where to look Next question, do you handle your own paperwork or did you hire someone to do the clerical side of things? As we were starting out, we did everything. Like I had my hand in marketing and accounting and coaching and building and everything. So you definitely are gonna have to be a, a bit of a chameleon at first, being able to handle all kinds of different things. But as you grow, you find good people to fit into roles. We've got guys who have developed like entire iPad sign-in systems and QuickBooks linking up to it and MindBody a software that manages all your customers. I went from managing everything in a little notebook to actually discovering faster ways over the years and now we're almost completely paperless and uh, everything's online so anyone that uh, needs to see something can access it no matter where they are. And these... Hey shut the... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these systems and things we just put into place over the years that took us a long time to develop. We actually went out to Bay Area to open up Apex Movement NorCal um, just last month and we implemented all these systems that took us years to develop in the matter of just a few weeks. Compared to us in Boulder where it took an accumulation of probably like five years to get to where we were and then we just simply used templates and shared uh, documents and whatnot to where it was just instantaneous. Ryan Starling writes, I also want to start up my own gym but have no idea on how to go about it. All right, first thing. <laughs> first thing is you're gonna have to write a little bit more of a specific question <laughs> if, uh, if you wanna make it happen. All right, jokes aside, Ryan, I'm sorry, I hope that wasn't offensive. Um, as we were saying earlier in the video, the first thing is passion, dedication, and finding the right people. So, do you have those things? Do you have some of those people? If not, find them. Make sure you've got those things. Next step. Call Ryan. His number is 720. <laughs> Alright. Grant Gutierrez sends us the cue. Seems the most pressing ones I can think of are space requirements and equipment recommendations. Basic, but a good place to start. Is that a question? 
What I think of when I hear that question is actually, is that a question? how do you, yeah, that's not really a question, but I'm going to answer it anyway. When you're starting out a parkour gym, you definitely have to think about what kind of space you're going to open it in and how much space do you need. You're actually going to pay a lot less in rent if you open up in some kind of industrial warehouse type space as opposed to a retail one. Um, I've seen parkour gyms open up initially with amount of space ranging from um, just a couple thousand square feet to like eight or ten thousand square feet. So you can start out small and grow over time. We've moved the Denver gym once and we're going to be moving the Boulder gym here soon as well. I'm confident you could start a parkour gym with a thousand square feet, a bunch of two by four precision trainers and some sturdy vault boxes and you could at least get your program off the ground with people learning the basics and as you develop a really good foundation of a beginning program, then maybe you'll save up enough money to get the next size up. A lot of people are asking what kind of equipment do you need? Well, as you can see kind of in the background here, or if you've seen any of our videos from the gyms, it's a combination of safety mats um, to learn acrobatics and things like that, as well as real life type obstacles. We try to mimic the outdoor environment here as opposed to a gymnastics gym, which is just padded everything. We like to have bars for scaffolding and um, hard vault boxes. This is actually uh, a shout out to the original Apex Movement vault box. Seven years in the running here. Um, it's been repainted, <laughs> new screws put in, new back, wood panels. Back when we had no idea what we were doing as far as making a vault box. We've got a lot better ones now, um, a lot in part thanks to sturdymade.com by Tyson and the guys in Seattle. Next question. Jan Dudik, how to come up with the money? <laughs> but seriously, what certification do you need to lead classes? Thought this is country dependent. Uh, all right, so we'll start with how to come up with the money. Sounds like a joke, but um, I mean, be creative there. You could strip for a living. I know that gets you about <laughs> six figures a year. Um, no way. I sold drugs. What? Are you serious? Yeah. Um, how do you know? If you wear the right costume and <laughs> you uh, have the personality that captivates a crowd. Um, but so actually, let's take that question seriously. How to come up with the money? Uh, actually, we started very humble and I don't think there was any investment back when Ryan started. It was nope. just an investment of time and as money started coming in, even though it was $5 a class, that money was saved and spent wisely and then uh, next thing you know, well not next thing you know, but years later, um, here we are. <laughs> what certification do you need? Uh, there is no certification that is the certification that you need and it's definitely not country dependent but uh, we have actually developed a certification over the last few years. Um, hey, there's Ken. Get in here, Ken. If you're going to be a successful parkour gym, you're probably going to need some very knowledgeable, credible health professionals such as Dr. Ken here. How much do you cost uh, annually for us, do you think? <clears throat> annually? We're trying to figure out prices for starting a parkour gym. Uh, 500000 So not too much <laughs> to get a little bit of credentials uh, behind the science that you're teaching. 500000 annually. Um, so to get back on the point, and add anything if you'd like. Uh, as far as certification goes, we actually have the uh, only certification that exists in the world right now. You can look it up at this point. Right <laughs> <laughs> All right, actually, okay, there are a few different certifications. So far, we've gotten a lot of great feedback. We've put a lot of time into it. Um, so do a little bit of research before you choose a certification and uh, call Ryan. His number is 720-219-7266. From slightly an outsider's perspective, even though you're an instructor here, uh -huh. what have you seen that you would give as good advice to somebody who wanted to start a parkour gym? I, I really don't feel people, like people should be teaching if they're not qualified to, and I understand parkour is young. Discipline is not something that, you know, we really have so many standards for, which is why we have certification, but um, I see a lot of really sloppy technique from instructors uh, that just decide to be instructors. So it, it bothers me personally as a doctor just seeing poor technique where they're hurting themselves um, and they're teaching other people to hurt themselves. And that's not cool to me. So screw yourself, but don't screw others. <laughs> Wise words. <laughs> Don't hurt people. Learn how to not hurt people. That's good advice for a gym. Leave all the uh, bad advice for tutorials online. Make sure your teachers in the gym 
are credible. Yeah. Alright, next question. Cordelia Storm. What's up, girl? Your question is, how to create effective parkour programming within your classes? Uh, so, this would go back to uh, writing a solid curriculum. You can't do that overnight. Uh, if you start, if you sit down and write a curriculum, it's going to have a ton of gaps in it. It's going to have a bunch of stuff that maybe you're not prepared to deal with, um, loopholes that you didn't see coming, whatever. That's why we work together with our instructors to evolve our curriculum constantly. And it's been going on like this for something like six, six and a half years. Um, then you can actually start to see some patterns arise. You can gather feedback after classes. You can see the progression of your students over years time. And uh, then you can start tweaking out your curriculum in order to program a healthy progression. All right, next question. No Skywalker. What's up, bro, Sif? Your question is, how do you bridge the gap between humongous property rentals and an expensive real estate market and revenues needed to sustain the business? It's a really good question. That's one that I've experienced here in Boulder, Colorado. Um, <laughs> learn how to live uncomfortable and with very little money for a short amount of time. Uh, that was my whole thing is sell all your material possessions. <laughs> but uh, seriously, you're gonna have to be super creative you're going to have to start with most likely a smaller space. Uh, rent is going to be the biggest chunk that's coming out <clears throat> for a long time. And hang in there, work hard. If you have a successful program, eventually it'll be no thing. And find a bunch of different creative ways to get more people in to use the space and help pay the rent. Like we've had um, an aerial dance studio, we've had fitness professionals, we've had birthday parties and space rentals, even for like concerts and uh, private parties and all kinds of creative ways you can get people in the space to help kind of make up chunks of change and pay the rent. Dakota Cantwell and a couple other people wanted to know, do we advertise and how do we go about advertising? Um, Actually, first up, I'd like to take a drink of this delicious water. You should try it also. Go on. Is there even any water in there? Yeah. Prove it. <laughs> All right, so Dakota Cantwell says, do you guys advertise your place and how do you go about it? A couple of you guys had advertising questions. So, I personally don't really adhere to traditional advertising strategies here. Um, I utilize my marketing background from business school and we are a very unique business, which means we can advertise and market in really unique ways. I haven't really spent any money on advertising aside from printing costs for like flyers. Um, we've been very lucky that we have a very young and exciting new sport or discipline that is appealing for people to want to know more about. So we've had a lot of success just by word of mouth and by putting our videos up online and having a good website. Also just getting out there and always being prepared and being able to pass out business cards to interested people. Um, also. I've been able to get a lot of interest and in free publicity from local news and magazines and papers and then also sponsors. I've gone after a lot of local sponsors who have been amazing like Illegal Pete's, Lark Burger, Mix One, um, also some national ones like Native Eyewear and Vivo Barefoot. So try to utilize all of those really unique creative ways that you can get people um, interested in and it's, you don't even have to convince them to be interested you just have to get them to know what parkour is and then they are automatically interested and it's not that hard to get them into the gym. Trevor DeGroot writes, I'm also interested about the lifestyle of a gym owner. Rewarding, fun, <laughs> obviously a lot of work but is it worth it? It's awesome. It rocks. It rocks. It, it's the best. It's the bomb. Rafe, you remember that one? <laughs> okay, let's, let's ask that again. Okay. Can, actually, can you ask the question again? So it's fresh yeah. on my mind. <clears throat> Trevor DeGroot writes, I'm also interested about the lifestyle of a gym owner. Rewarding, fun, obviously a lot of work, but is it worth it? Yes, it is. I'm sure that's so relative though. Uh, for me, there were definitely two years where things were intense 
we were fighting like a married couple almost every day and um, there are some dark times there's some dark times but in the end I could never do anything that I don't believe in love or thought made other people's lives better so yeah without a doubt it's definitely worth it but it's not all fun and games um, it's a lot, a lot of work. I mean, it's totally worth it to me. I get to spend every day of my life jumping on shit and jumping off shit and teaching people to do the same. And on the same note, I mean, I, I do gotta work on some of the back-end business type stuff, but when I think about it, it's just to improve everything else that's around me and this opportunity that I have. So it's completely worth it to me, but that's because I'm very passionate about it. If you're not passionate about it, I would definitely, um, Tell you to proceed with caution. Be be sure that this is what you want to do. Can you edit that in? Yes. Yeah. Can you micromanage a little bit? Um, Aiden, can you please take my place for five minutes? <laughs> Just, Come on, get up here. This is Just Ash, GM of Apex Movement Boulder. He does a lot of the management now. And we have a question for you, Just Ash. What would you say is one of the most important aspects of managing a parkour gym? Um, I think mostly it's about building a really amazing community that's full of energy. Um, just people that can really vibe well together and uh, get work done and just generally have fun. So, what would you say are some things that you can do as a community leader or maybe gym manager to uh, foster that? Well, really work with everyone around you. I mean, um, I guess being a manager, you can't just sit in the back room and only do the office work. You got to be out talking to people, having fun with people, getting to know people, and uh, I think that is what helps the most. Yeah, if people feel like they're a part of the community, they feel like they have a lot of friends here, then they're going to keep coming back and they want to be a part of it. But if they came here and for a month of attending, they didn't make any new friends and nobody talked to them, then of course they're not going to come back here. So build that community for sure. Are you guys recording your Ninja Warrior videos? No. <laughs> <laughs> you would walk up and ask that. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. What else are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little Q&A. Okay, Q&A for Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Casimir of American Ninja Warrior. Um, actually, I do have a question for Paul. Go, go ahead and bring it in here, Paul. Get into our family portrait. Sure. All right, so that's a little too close. <laughs> no, okay, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> All right, don't get too aggressive. All right, so my question for you, Paul, is as this community was growing, you're one of our longtime students, what was one thing that really retained you as a student here? I think it's the atmosphere of training with a bunch of guys like you guys. Um, you know, I like doing it, but it's a lot more fun to actually do it with people who enjoy it as well. Cool, cool. So the community goes it goes back to. Cool, thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah. All right, question from Brandon Messenger. Uh, what kind of permits and licenses do you need to own and operate a gym that collects revenue? Um, it varies, there's so much. Um, everywhere from taxes to being up to city code, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but in Boulder, we've always played it by the books. Every state has different laws, licenses, taxes. Um, so, you know, depending on your region, uh, it varies. Uh, in Boulder, you know, payroll taxes, um, state taxes, all um, you know, vary even by county. So uh, it's all about looking up on your state um, government pages and uh, and kind of checking out what happens in your own um, location. Lastly, with that, that just takes being creative, resourceful, learning, reading a bunch of government websites, whatever. It has to be done. All right, Jeff Pitchard asks, how many bars? I'm gonna assume you mean handrails. Well, we've got like three weightlifting bars and lots of scaffolding bars and about 10 precision bars and lots of Lara bars as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice. That was, that was good. You probably have no idea what that is. And we're kind of next to a bar, Avery. There you go, bro. You should uh, locate your business next to a brewery. 
but it's always good for the parents. They can drop their kids off and head over to Avery, have a brewski. And then when they come back and their kid has a broken arm, they usually don't care. They're just like, get in the car, let's go. Oh, shit. <laughs> Our parents don't drive drunk. <laughs> or people don't break their arms here. Yeah, we just made all that up. All of that. When trying to be creative, like we were saying before, and, uh, and resourceful, in starting with very little money or very small space, um, one of the aspects is leveraging the people in your community who have a lot of different backgrounds. So how would you do that, Jessash? Well, we found out through just years of practice that getting to know your students, um, you can actually find out a lot of their background as well, such as some of them are engineers, some of them are plumbers, some of them are woodworkers, uh, framers, all over the place. Yeah. In fact, most of the work that we've done in this gym um, has been work trading or through help from our students with their various skills. So, um, you know, really getting to know your students outside of, uh, outside of actually teaching classes helps a lot. All right, you can go. Thank you everyone for participating. I hope that we can both offer you guys some information that helps you uh, get closer to your dreams and the directions you want to go. Um, we have found that our experience and how much hard work we've put into this can actually be a very useful tool for others. So now we uh, can help you open your own Apex Movement. We also can certify instructors. And we found that this is a great win-win situation where we can offer our skills and make it our job. Cool, thanks for watching, guys. Um, again, this was meant to be a pretty general topic that we could spend hours and hours and days and days talking about. But if you really want to get more into it, we're available. We're here for uh, coaching certifications and consulting and all that kind of stuff. Seven two six six. Yep. Just give me a call. Give me a call. Let me know what your question is. And until next time, post next your questions below. We'll answer them in the next one. Next Q. Text parkour to six two six six one. PK. To get your for life. question answered. Good music too. That's important for a parkour gym. And recycle. That was really <laughs> out of nowhere. All right, that's a wrap. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next Q and A. Apex movement.